I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Souls Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. What's up, buddy? Yeah, Edward. How are you feeling, my man? Not bad. We have a very exciting show in front of everybody today. Not only do we have another incredible guest, not just a force of feminine nature, <laughs> but a very, very funny comedian, Lizzie Cassidy. Lizzie, Thank you. what is your worst day job? Well... You know, here's the thing. I had a day job where I shoveled horse shit at 5 a.m. every day for a long time. But did you love and animals? And still the worst job I've had is working in restaurants and comedy clubs. <laughs> I would rather shovel shit for the rest of my life <laughs> than be a waitress or a comedy club manager ever again. You know what's great? Because I, um, I hung out. I started at Lloyd Comedy Story and I was a door guy for a hot minute. Yeah. And I was really close with the staff there. And seeing the ins and outs of, I feel like stand up. Maybe I'm nostalgic, and I'm, we talk about this every week. But maybe more. I, I thought it was more fun then. Like yeah. Early aughts. Oh, like I thought it was fun 04, when I started. Oh five, oh six. It was like a great environment. Everyone's partying together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they lo- everyone loved comedy. Like no one got a job there. They didn't like absolutely right. yeah. love yeah, 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 yeah. stand up. Yeah. yeah. But at, when I came to New York, it was more of a machine. Yeah. I worked in the machine. Yeah, you worked in the machine. <laughs> yeah, I was a door guy, but they call it a manager there because oh. you can like you know void things yeah. when someone orders yeah, the wrong I could thing. Void shit. So like you check tickets and you void, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> did did waitress did like the waitress have to come up to you and like Lizzie? I got three voids. Yeah, like, you, it, I just yeah. gave them all my code. Yeah. I was like, you yeah, guys have exactly. been working here longer than me. I'm like twenty. I got cameras. Take right? Take the code, <laughs> dude. I remember because I worked in tons of restaurants when we got the uh, somebody got. So that card? Like, yeah, the card. The card's huge. The, yeah. the card, card is huge. That void card is the shit. And you'd be walking by and you'd see somebody with a void card. Yo, 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 yeah. yo. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It can pass yeah. I don't have to like, tell anyone what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> see, I remember when I was a, when you worked the door at the, the comedy store, especially back then, it was, I think it was 2004, I made like 50 bucks a shift. And I was there for like seven, eight hours. I mean, oh, you do. Yeah. You have God. to open up for the eight and then you have to close it after the 10. Oh. Yeah. So you're there from like, 5 30 to 1 a.m. Fucking and criminal. You're, oh, and you're really only doing it in hopes of getting an additional spot. Right. Yeah. So I remember like hoping when you, because you would make you seat and it was La Jolla, you were just praying some guy would give you a 50. Oh. You were just yeah. praying because you, that would be like, you would split it amongst the other door guys, but you knew like that was, I made 100 bucks tonight because yeah. of tips. Oh, but I wow. feel like when you're, that doesn't happen when you're working. No, I made. Can you say what you were doing? Like, yeah, I mean, I worked at a comedy club called Stand Up New York, and I don't care, whatever. <laughs> famous for not paying their employees. <laughs> <laughs> Literally famous for not paying yeah, people. There was a Sorry. Whole, there was a whole, like, like I didn't publish the article about the lawsuit. I don't like whatever. Um, but I don't think people get it that. You, how hard it is to work in a comedy club but did you know you wanted to be were you doing yeah stand-up? Oh, i started okay. doing stand-up like i got an internship there and the same time i started doing stand-up and so i was like working in the office during the day doing like their social media uh-huh. and then one night a manager got fired and the <laughs> the gm works. was like well you kind of get how this works <laughs> do you want to be a manager and they i was like bookers at comedy club. i know i know <laughs> Dude, if I had stayed for three more years, I'd be booking that place. <laughs> like, <laughs> it sounds nuts because, okay, this is so great that we're talking about this. I think you're the first person we've ever had on that tried, that wanted to be in stand-up. Yeah. And instead of like, oh, I'll get a, a door guy job. You technically did. Yeah. But you were management. Yeah. Which is like the antithesis of trying to come in. Oh yeah, and like other the back door. other open micers thought I could like book them. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it looks like, like you have so much power. I was like, I can't even book myself. I don't know how this works. <laughs> like, it was crazy. I like, and also same thing. I was just hoping to get a spot. Yeah. Like that's why I was getting paid a hundred dollars per show. They don't tell you like when you work on that side of the staff, it is almost harder. Yeah. To yeah. Flip over to the 
performance side. Yeah. yeah. So I was like not making a lot of money because you get paid per show, $100 tops like on the weekends, sometimes less oh. than that. And so if you have to stay, you have to be there an hour before the show. Some, and then like I want to be a comedian. So if the comics are staying and drinking after the show, yeah. I'm not going to fucking kick them out because I want them to like of me. Yeah, right, so sometimes I have to stay like three hours after my yeah. shift, which I'm not getting paid for. Uh, just like just fucking hang. hanging oh, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like a drunk at the time. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying to count cash yeah. shit you're face. trying to close out your drawer oh my god when the drawer Meanwhile. when the drawer doesn't zero in your shit face you're like this is the Great worst Geraldo day won't this leave. is the worst day of my life <laughs> <laughs> and then like one time i got the spot that like i'm waiting around hoping someone doesn't show up i got the spot and it was to this day the worst bomb of my life wow oh it was so much hanging on that it was like because how is it not going to be a bomb it was dude, yeah right you know, the what circumstances you of this were it so insane it was a midnight show which was advertised as free but we had an 18 dollar drink minimum uh. and i was the person who had to tell everyone <laughs> who thought they were going to a free show about the 18 dollar drink minimum and then the person who didn't show up was the check spot which for people listening is the person who's on stage when everyone's paying their checks so they're Happy paying their you. checks that i told them they have to pay at this free show <laughs> And I was also the person who lit people and like told the host that yeah. they had to go get the comic off stage. So nobody lit me because that was my job. Oh my God, so, so I figured ran. the host would just stay in the room. The host left the room. I was like four weeks into comedy maybe. The host left me on stage for 17 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was bombing so bad. Dude, I, wow. I respect you for staying on that long. Dude, I, I didn't know. You. I didn't know at the time that like it would have been better if I got off and got the host. Like I didn't know anything. I respect you for being like dumb brave. It was oh, so fucking I scary. That. I people. I was bombing That'd be so the bad. Worst first time ever at a club. Yeah. That you want to work? Yeah. I've ever heard. I was bombing so bad that people were going like this. The audience <laughs> was hiding their faces from me, and I was just like, I had like three minutes of material, so I was just trying to think of anything funny I'd ever said in my life. I was like sweating, you know, trying to do crowd work, but they won't talk to me because they hate me. Everybody's <laughs> figured out the tip for fifteen and a half minutes. It was fucking. I mean, the amount of watch looking. <laughs> And they're probably tipping less than they would have normally because this girl they hate is on stage. Oh, and, then you got, and then you gotta go back to work. And, and then you gotta close that's your the worst out. part, dude. I didn't get to like go leave no. after that. I had to finish my shift. <laughs> I had to sit there at the door like I thought I did a good job you while they all walked the out. Podium of the room. And watch them walk by you. I had to go. Thanks for coming. Good night. Like I thought I like I thought I did something. It was so fucked up. <laughs> Oh my God. I love that. Oh, That's almost God. as bad as this time I had to work a fucking prom show and they, the, it was after their prom and the prom kids shows were a nightmare. so drunk and they were all dancing, like not dancing, but drunk grinding. Uh, yeah. And then the DJ just like a record scratch and then they brought me up immediately. There was literally a kid with an erection. <laughs> there was a ki- when the there had to stopped. be multiple kids with erections <laughs> but on the dance floor. This kid legit had an erection, and then I had to go up and it was almost as bad as you having to tell people they had to almost. pay eighteen dollars of drinks. <laughs> I don't know what oh person who's trying to run a comedy venue needs to hear this, but making people stop dancing for comedy uh, will never ever work. Ever, it I, will never work. I just it's love the worst <laughs> that we're all inside ball game people right now. Like we've yeah. actually seen the inner workings of a comedy club and how insane it is yeah and how people treat it so precious i know like having a spot at this place would define me uh, i know do, people do walk in <laughs> the booker yeah th- there is no like they don't have an inside track to hollywood yeah like, no someone got fired and they go i'll do it yeah you don't open, get more money for it. you have to really love comedy yes. and want to book it it's a horrible position to be in it's a horrible position. Open micers will walk into a shitty comedy club like, I know what that stage means. You know? Like, <laughs> like it's something, like it's this huge thing and it's like, you, and then you work there and you're like, dude, this place is a fucking dumb. It's like talking okay? to a virgin about <laughs> yes. sex. Yeah. That's yeah, what it's yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's talking to a virgin about yeah, sex. Yeah, it's That's not always size. good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love that you were saying like trying to count out the money at the end of the night. Dude, <laughs> nightmare. I have that great story. I think I told you about this uh, at the pair. Uh, our buddy uh, Sean. Oh yeah, so yeah. He's at the end of the night. He's doing the count out, and I guess he's just hammered. Yeah. And I don't know. It gets misplaced. So the next day at the at the oh pair. Oh That's a great story. At the pair, you know the guys that run the place. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gary and uh, Peter. Gary is there. And the drop is missing. 
Oh my God. This is giving me anxiety. This is like giving me anxiety about working in a restaurant. When you heard the drop was missing. Ah! And he's just furious. He's just steaming. And everybody's piling in for the open mic. Yeah. So it's like 4.30. There's just a bunch of young comics. Oh my God. It's daytime dive bar energy. (laughs) The worst. Just the worst. And Sean's supposed to run the mic. He's supposed to. And he's late. So there's no one to run the mic. There's a room full of uh, young comics. And then Gary comes up and he goes all right you pieces of shit <laughs> <laughs> i hate your people have for stand-up he's comedians got the amazing. list of names and he i mean goes, they're right though like if anyone's gonna <laughs> steal the cash Dude, he goes like this he goes i should replace all of you with pinball machines oh that's Aiden, not a bad idea <laughs> he just goes aiden you're up <laughs> <laughs> How'd they find the money? They, they found the money, right? Yeah, Sean just Misplaced put it, it in the wrong place. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. It was amazing. I lost somebody's credit card once. Oh. Night. Man. Uh, I mean, just that's not, losing. That's not that bad. That happens all the time. No, but like lost. Never found. <laughs> like lost somebody's credit card. Two weeks later, I was How cleaning was, the bar they... mats for the first time in two weeks. Found it. It was oh. under there. How pissed off was it? Were the so fucking mad. He was going to call the cops. I was like, I don't think you can. Yeah, just report <laughs> it off. Just cancel I was like, it. Yeah. dude, I'm sorry, yeah, but like, shit obviously I'm not charging you for anything because yeah, I don't have your fucking credit yeah, exactly, card. Yeah, exactly, right. Yeah, you got a scot free, yeah, you cancel the card, you, you get a new one. Shut yeah. the fuck up about it. People would get so fucking mad at me there. Like, but that neighborhood's a little uptight, too. It's a little yeah, uptight. Yeah, and yeah. it's also like, it's tourists, but it's like the rich ones. Yeah. yeah. One time this British guy yelled at me for 25 minutes about the American tipping system. And at some point, like halfway through our conversation, I was like, buddy, I'm a waitress. Yeah, why are people What do you want me? How do you want me to fucking fix this? Why are they kicking this? our ass? Yeah. The working class person that's just oh, there because they need the job. Fuck. I don't make the fucking rules. Literally, here. I was like, I'm, I'm not an economist, bro. Yeah, <laughs> what do you do? I'm a waitress. I'm not Rand Paul or I whatever. would rather you not tip me than have this conversation yeah. with me. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Like... Also, when I worked there, I was getting tipped out 2%, which is hilarious. <laughs> 2%? Two, so, like, every night of wages would just hand me $2. Oh, God. <laughs> it's such an insult. It's oh, and it's insult. like, yeah, man, just give me, just don't tip me out. Oh. And you just got give one me the spot shift out pay. of the whole thing? I, I, eventually, <laughs> I got 17, better. 17-minute spot, to be <laughs> That is true. That to is, like, rare. three check spots in one. <laughs> Eventually, I started getting like spots there, whatever. But the good news was one of my only friends there was the booker, and then she moved to another comedy club that is oh, better yeah, 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 that yeah. I work at now. So yeah, that actually, right. that is the one way that working at a comedy club helped me. Was like a, I met a booker there that ended up getting a better job. So like that was like yeah. a good in for me. Sure. And yeah. also, I met comics there yep. who like remember that I worked there, mm-hmm. and also. I know how every comedian in New York treats the wait staff, and I have opinions about yeah. them now. <laughs> you don't realize how important that really Patreon is. Going. Yeah, is, I'll name uh, names on a page. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they. I remember a guy telling me that when I first started working on the road, when I was probably five years in. Yeah. He was like this old, salty stand-up dog that only did road gigs. Mm-hmm. He just bailed on the city system. He's like, take always take care of the staff. Yeah. Don't fuck one of the waitresses and not like take care of the staff. Yeah. I think he's getting married a waitress. <laughs> he, he legit married. He married yeah, but that's how you take care of the staff. Yeah. You don't yeah. fuck the waitress. You marry, marry the waitress. Her. That's nice. That's good. Yeah. Family in every town. Yeah. <laughs> you knock her up. You get hitched. Best. That's good. I like that. So what did you do after? Like, what did you do? Then I got a job in a. Fast casual Japanese fusion restaurant. Fast Ooh, casual. What fast was that? Casual. Is that where it goes cash. in that little wheel? No, it's just like so the sushi goes. It's in like the, wheel? the dining level of like an Olive Garden or an Applebee's, uh, like okay. Chili's, but it's Japanese food. But it's like if you look in the kitchen, everything is just like a package of yeah, they're just yeah. peeling and off they're just the dumping wrapper, it in a yeah. pan. Uh, and that was a fucking nightmare. Carrying a, a tray of ramen is a fucking uh, nightmare in Murray Hill. Which is like oh the God. one of the worst neighborhoods in New York yeah. because oh, it's all yeah. offices. And I worked lunches because I wanted to do stand up at night. Yeah. So everybody had an hour long lunch break from their fucking finance job so and they thought they were better than check you. Check right away. So it was just like it was an hour of the most insane rush you've ever seen, and then t- like a few hours on either end of fucking nothing. Yeah. Like a few hours on either end of if you can lean, you can clean. <laughs> 
And have you ever gone that one? Oh yeah. Oh. Well, a, so I am the version yeah. of working class holes that works in offices at very gotcha. low level jobs. He is the wait staff. So this is something let me that. Ask you, let me ask you. A yeah. What's lean and clean? Okay. Oh, so wait, I guess I didn't have ketchup there, but the no. soy sauce. Did you have to like combine yeah. the soy sauce? Yeah. 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 And the little like. There's like a Japanese version of like pepper flakes, and you have to like funnel them in. Oh, it yeah, sucks! Yeah, yeah. It sucks. If you so can lean, you can clean. Friday. Is that's what yeah, a manager just, says to you if, oh, you're, oh, if you're like having okay. a little too much downtime. Gotcha, gotcha. Why don't you clean out the walk-in <laughs> fridge, even though you're a fucking waitress? Yep. Yeah. Oh my god, the amount of shit I would have to lug around, like get this box of whatever placemats off the top shelf in here, oh. and I'm just like a girl, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Lizzie, come on upstairs. We gotta, we gotta. <laughs> what are you, Lizzie? Five, 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 five six. Cases yeah. of vodka I need to unload from this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Climb this ladder and grab those five cases of Tito's. Will yeah, you, we got a shipment of new ceramic bowls, so help him unload the truck. What are you talking about? Dude, that's crazy. It was a fucking nightmare. It's like you I called the dishwasher. Like, yes. Why am I? Why are yeah. we? Yeah. Because my section is slow. I didn't ask for this. Cut me. You don't even pay me. Here's the thing: yeah, you don't me. get paid the same as a dishwasher. No. A house, you get a, no. like a waiter rate. Yeah. <laughs> I called OSHA on that place. Oh, did you really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. That's oh, like wow. the most working class shit I've wow. ever said. <laughs> yeah, we had like it was like an open kitchen, so it's the kind of thing where like you know when you're at a restaurant, you can see the yeah, kitchen. Yeah, yeah. It was like that, and the vents stopped working, which means all the smoke and shit from the from when they're cooking usually goes up into the vents and gets sucked out. But it was just pouring into the restaurant, Ugh. so it was like ninety six degrees in the restaurant, a hundred and ten degrees in the kitchen. They didn't close. They, they didn't close. Wow. At one point, a lady a who was like, yeah. "Yeah, it's also like you're breathing in smoke the whole yeah. time. It's hot as fuck." A lady who was like eight months pregnant walked into the restaurant while I was walking by the host stand, and I just turned to her and I was like, "You don't want to eat here." I was like, this is not safe for you to be here. And she looked around and she was like, yeah, thanks. And Whoa. walked out. And so I went in the bathroom and called HR and they were like tough tits, you know, oh, because man. they don't, like HR actually works for your boss. They don't work of for course. you. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I called them. They didn't care. So then I called OSHA and I was like, this must be against the rules. <laughs> And so after two days of that, me and the other person who called got them shut down. Two days later, every restaurant shut down because of COVID. Uh, <laughs> so it didn't even matter. It oh, didn't even man. matter. That's amazing. That's we all thought we'd get like a week off of work, and then we were out of work for two fucking years. <laughs> it's almost like little Eddie McGowan, 12 years old, working at a Chinese restaurant down uh, in the basement. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. onions. <laughs> OSHA didn't show up to that one, though. No, they did not. No, they I, didn't I even know about that place. I should have called uh, OSHA on <laughs> yeah, that. So we should have. I saw uh, an old woman like a, with a, a, like a catering tray of rice drop it on the All floor it. and then take it right back up scoop it back into the yeah. pan I was like dude restaurants are what, fucking what nasty what's gonna happen with that what are you doing with that rice <laughs> Because this floor is filthy. You're like, wait a minute, I'll eat that. Is that how you became the guy who eats expired food? Just well, no. And then the trainer, the the uh, staff meal was a lot of rice. <laughs> oh my god, what a nightmare! I will say the cool thing about the restaurant, the last restaurant I worked in, was instead of staff meal, you could order off the menu. Oh, which is tight every time. Yeah. It was a chain, so like uh -huh. a lot of chain restaurants will do that. And if you're a girl. You can get hooked up by the oh. line cooks in that kitchen. Oh, for yeah. Sure. Oh, my God. I would eat so good there. And oh. I'd, I'd have, like, enough food to bring home for, like, two more meals. That was definitely the best thing about That's, that. Yeah, that is, I remember that. It's like, if you were a semi-attractive female, those I, I would uh, lose semi-attractive. Just be a girl <laughs> be in a, a girl. restaurant. <laughs> yeah. I was, like, in active addiction. I looked like shit every day. And they are all like, hey. <laughs> You're yo, here. Yo, Liz. Yo, Liz. Yo, Liz. Yo, Liz. Yeah. Yo, yo, Liz. You showed up. <laughs> Slide you some chicken fingers. Uh. Yeah. Also, no one that worked in that restaurant was Japanese even a little bit. <laughs> Dude, I, yeah. I, uh, it's nasty. Do you yeah. still have, I was just thinking about this on the way over. Do you still uh, have like dreams about waiting tables? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. I have dreams about working at Stand Up New York and dreams about waiting tables that are just like so weird. It's like, so weird. It's always like. Why do you like, think that is? Because your brain was so consumed. Yeah. I think it's like such a high stress. Remembering and orders and yeah. But the secret to working in a restaurant is the moment you realize that none of it matters yeah. and you can get another restaurant job at any time, which isn't as true anymore. But at the time you could get another restaurant job in a day. Mm -hmm. It it stops being stressful. It doesn't matter. Like one time we were all eating after our shift and and like three people were crying because it had been a real tough one. <laughs> and this girl looked at me and she was like, how are you not upset about this? And I was like, oh, I don't care about this place. 
Like if someone leaves a bad Yelp review for it, this isn't my restaurant. Yeah. Right. I don't give a, some ladies screaming at me because she didn't get her ramen fast enough. Let her scream at me. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Like this isn't a fucking hospital. It's a restaurant. Everybody's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Everything's going to be fine. But that stage means something. Is but that, that stage told her? does mean something. <laughs> 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 and it's the same at a comedy club. People like, though. I guess it matters a little more because if the whole audience is pissed off, then the show will be bad. Sure. But the cool thing about working in a comedy club is there are rules, so the customer isn't always right. Right. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. you that's can be kind of a bitch to yeah, the customer at a comedy club because, like, you came into this environment where there are rules. You gotta pay the minimum. Yeah. You gotta not heckle. You gotta do this, this, and that. Yeah. So, like, I can find a reason to make you the you bad guy leverage. and kick you. Also, having a fucking twenty-year-old girl be the person who kicks people out it's is crazy. crazy. Yeah, that's get that, a security yeah. guard. That's fucking nuts. I've never understood that about comedy clubs. Sometimes I'd walk into some places and some of them wouldn't have security. On like a Saturday night. Like, yeah, we never did. How do you not have? I think they ended up getting night? it, but when I worked there, there was never security there. I've been I've, the most uh, the most brawls I've ever seen are through comedy. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, twenty years of comedy. That yeah, no other job I've ever had or been through. Has that, have I seen that many brawls? It's it's because of the drinking. You have a yeah, business yeah. model because where people have to buy drinks. Yes. Exactly. And they're not gonna a comedy club isn't gonna flag somebody. No. no. Stop serving somebody. Are you kidding no. me? <laughs> No, absolutely not. We had um, one of the bartenders who worked there when I worked there was a black belt, but he looked like a regular guy. If that makes yeah, sense, like he wasn't like yeah. this, like jacked. No, like if you yeah. just walked by and you weren't like that guy's scary, yeah, you know. Right. Uh, and there was this one time a guy came in and was just like, like immediately sexually harassing all of the f- girls on the wait staff and the female comics and yeah. shit. Like just like saying gross shit to us because like it's a comedy club. That's the thing. Yeah. People like come into yeah. a comedy club and they're like, I can be the worst person ever <laughs> because this is a comedy club. Like a titty These bar. Get it. Yeah. yeah. Like right. men at a titty bar. I can feel totally. everyone yeah. here. It's exactly I like men. So hard, at a- yeah. <laughs> and like, this isn't a titty bar. Like, you shouldn't even do that there, but like, I'm just a person, you know? And so this guy was like being an asshole to all of us, whatever. The show ended and he left and he left his phone. And I was like, oh my God, I got to fucking deal with this dude again. So he called like from his friend's phone. He like called the club and I'd be like, yeah, we have your phone. And he came back in and I went to meet him at the door to hand him the phone so that he couldn't like bother us anymore and I gave him the phone and he like followed me back inside and I don't even remember what he was saying but it was like something gross you know he was just like saying gross shit to me and the bartender jumped over the bar and threw him like the door didn't break but to through the doors to make it open into the street and then just locked the door and I was like god that rules that was the coolest thing I've ever seen on that guy where he he's going strong leaves the venue it still has enough juice to come back in and pick up where he left off. Crazy. I mean, that's in a. How do you walk through life without getting knocked out at least one time? Right. right. If you that have that kind yeah, of yeah, that guy needed that in you. Yeah. That guy yeah. so needed to be yes. thrown into the street. I'm sure he's been punched in the face a bunch of times. Yeah. You think? I think like he was on coke. Guy. It sounded uh, like uh, black it guy. seemed like he was on coke. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. yeah, like, oh, she's opening the door. Oh, it's me and her right yeah. now. She's, yeah, she's yeah, She's feeling yeah, yeah. me. Yeah, oh, right. Scumbag. Nasty. Totally. Especially yeah. if, like, once I started getting spots there, if I had to go on stage, like, I talk about sex a lot on stage. Mm-hmm. So then that, like, always makes guys think they can come up to you and be like, you know, I love eating <laughs> pussy. And you're like, get <laughs> away from me, dude. You know, dude. one thing about your act I want to let you know, I, I myself love <laughs> eating pussy. I don't know if that resonates with hey, you. You had mentioned uh, Connor Winkus earlier. <laughs> told you know, quite of an expert. <laughs> or they do this thing they, they always do this weird thing Where they bring up their wife Like they are hitting on you But they're like You know my wife I don't know how dirty I can be on that. It doesn't matter right what They're like you, you know my wife Is a squirter And you're like What are you What is your plan What is your plan right now Am I gonna You want me to fuck you And your wife You wanna cheat on your wife With me Like what is this that's like you always clear the with thing. your motives. They're be like, my wife, happiness. she's never been happier. And it's like, okay. <laughs> she's dancing in the All daffodils. Right. Those also, guys, there's no chance you're making your wife come. No. That guy? Those guys, that's what you know what that guy wants? That guy wants you to be okay with him having a wife. That's yeah, exactly that what guy, That's why he's throwing it out there. He's like, I think he yeah, also. I, I bang my wife. Hey, yeah. What do you think of that? How you. 
How you how you taking the bait? Yeah, he also <laughs> wants to talk to you about sex with like plausible deniability of yeah, sexually harassing exactly you. Exactly right. So he's like, I was talking about my wife. Yeah, like yeah, clearly, exactly. I wasn't trying to fuck her. I was talking about my yeah. wife, and it's like, like hitting on people I know with what the bumpers on. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. With the bumpers on. Yeah. Uh, man, come on, we got to be better than that. <laughs> we got to do better than that. I know. Please do better oh. than that, guys. Jesus Christ. So fucking gross. I mean, be about your sexuality, but come on. Like, just get a grip. Like, I bet someone would might respect you more if you're like, listen, I love the fuck. My wife doesn't. <laughs> I like you. I think you were. I think you you're have, cool. I, I, I'm, vi- I'm vibing with yeah, your right, shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, my name is Josh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was an active like, alcoholic. Yeah, I could have done that. Yeah, dude, like, that could have been on. fine. <laughs> Like, come on, man. Just say what you want and walk away. You're getting turned down regardless. Exactly. Yeah. Nine out of exactly. ten times women say no, even if you are a good looking guy with your shit together. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Women, it was women such can a nightmare. say no if they're having like a slightly off day. Yeah. That's how bad they don't need you. Yeah. Well, I don't think men 100%. realize like how unneeded yeah. they are. Yeah, especially if like your whole sell is that you'll fuck them yeah i know (laughs) like it's one thing if you like offer to buy them dinner i'm broke i need dinner i don't need some loser to fuck me oh like i can't get that anyway i have i have them in my phone they're in my phone Uh, get out of here titties for an hour see if the vibe's right (laughs) what an offer (laughs) oh my god (laughs) fucking dipshits man good you know what's funny though i think that works I guarantee you, I've played a lot of VFWs. I've played a lot yeah. of like one-off, deep-rooted bars yeah. that have mm-hmm. been sitting in a town of a thousand people. When those people hit 45, 50, yeah. that yeah. shit works. Yeah. 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 There's right. not much back and forth. Yeah, that has totally, to totally. But like a 20-year-old girl in yeah, New York, dude. what are you oh. talking about? <laughs> no, Life is peak. This guy, I did a show in Atlantic City, and this guy was Classy. like, cla- oh, I, I'm really Lizzie, big in the Atlantic the City circuit. <laughs> 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 this guy came up to me after the show and was like, telling me he was like you know i own an apartment building in manhattan and i have a boat and then he's like well actually i'm the super of an apartment building in manhattan (laughs) and i was like yeah man okay (laughs) i just love how he dropped like Two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars in uh, net worth, yeah. like in a matter of seconds. I know. Oh my God. Also, to <laughs> give up the I'm lie super. that, uh, and also like giving up the lie means he thought there was a chance I was gonna go to that building with him. Well, that's a, <laughs> and he didn't want to get caught yeah, in the lies. Yeah, yeah. He's like, well, I, I do have to tell you, I'm the super. So what's worse? That guy thinking he had a shot. Like, what were you doing to make that guy think like this could really happen? I was I just doing cover comedy. My, my bets. Well, what happened was he was like heckling during the show, so I was like uh, talking about how he like has a little dick or something. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's why this guy was like, "Well, we've already talked about my penis, <laughs> so that's a foot in the door." So wait, so this is after the set? Yeah. Yeah. That's, and yeah. then he goes, uh, "Yeah, I own a building in Manhattan," and you're like, "Uh huh." Yeah. And I got a boat. Uh huh. Actually, I'm just. Sure. Yeah, literally exactly <laughs> like that. Also, that, uh, not to mention his. I see. I, I caught you with the boat. Let me backtrack on the on the apartment. Yeah, building. not to mention his date was standing behind him the oh, whole time. Oh God! You know what? What a fucking. Dude. And he was a guy who wore a a sweater. It was like Christmas time. He wore a Christmas sweater with lights on it to a comedy show. He's this guy. Oh, oh wow. God! Kill him! Kill that guy! Wow! That guy should be shot. I, guess. I never. You know. On the stage? It sounds like a guy who puts like. He would have you know? if it was that kind of stage. He would have. <laughs> Unfortunately, never... it was a theater that was a third sold, but. <laughs> <laughs> With another brag. Just fucking chill, right? we, we invited you here. You don't got to show out for us. It was a theater in a hotel that was a third sold. <laughs> Pretty big stuff for me. I never, you know, I, I never realized that part of being a female comedian if you're engaging with some yeah. idiot and talking about sex even if you're not hitting on him. It doesn't it matter. It could open the door of him thinking yeah, that right. you guys had a moment. Yeah, I hide like, in the green Buddy, room. I'm at work. Yeah. Yeah. Every like every time that happens on a show, all the other like all the boy comics get to go like give everyone their Instagram, and I'm hiding in the green yeah. room because I'm like, I don't know. I told some guy I bet he can't eat pussy, and now he's gonna try to prove he can. I don't want it. I don't want to talk to that guy. Hey, no comedian should ever give another comedian a hard time for showing ass and titties. Then, because yeah. if that's the alternative to having to stay out there and talk to someone totally. and get followers that way, then do it. Yeah. Dude, if I could show my dick and it would be like 
book them. I've been showing my dick all <laughs> I know. day. Oh. I would never want to talk to anyone. Yeah. I know. Why every would I time, do it harder? Every time like a male comedian is like, you know, that girl's hooking up with the booker. That's why she gets booked here. I'm like, Great. do you want to suck that guy's dick? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody has to suck that guy's dick. Awesome. And she's her. brave. Dream and she's Good pursuing her. She is brave and yeah. that's great. I don't want to do that. <laughs> She just right. she she might not want to do as many sets, and I don't want to suck that guy's dick. Exactly. And we're both in the same place, yeah. and that's fine. It all evens out in the end. Yeah, you know, everybody's hustling in yeah. some way. <laughs> I love how, every, oh, man. Can you believe uh, the fucking accountability on that? I know her compass doesn't point true north. Like, shut up. Shut dude. up. We're dude. all in this awful business what together. A horrible we're all that sucking metaphor. the proverbial yeah. cock. You're compass lying to doesn't... tourists to get them in here for your spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all. Yeah. Doing right. something. Yeah. yeah, you keep saying you're on the Tonight Show in your fucking <laughs> intro. Yeah. So we're all lying here, asshole. Yeah, you were in the audience yeah. once. <laughs> it, was, it was in the audience once and the camera cut to him pretty huge. I love the two parts of comedy I love. The art of doing it and then the hatred of it. The yeah. joy I, I get from hating my so chosen path. Isn't it so amazing? Good. It feels incredible. So good. I don't know if anybody else, like people with regular jobs, of course, but I don't know if anybody else has a job that they like pined for their whole life hates it as and much as openly hating do. it all while you're pursuing it it's crazy i bitch about comedy as much as i bitched about any other job that i've had because oh, yeah. because being like, a comedian were, like, is working in a restaurant yeah it is. you work in a restaurant yeah, yeah. that's what it is yeah. like you're a you service just, person you both have just said about service jobs i knew exactly what we we're talking about, even though i haven't had one service job yeah. in my life solely because i've been a comedian for 20 years mm -hmm. yeah you think i'm not slinging drinks on stage so the club has me back come on <laughs> i'm a waitress <laughs> i don't i'm like your not... stand up gimmick i'm the waitress <laughs> oh that'd be that would stink on ice oh man i'd be in atlantic city more often than i already am <laughs> you'd be a hit <laughs> They would love me, and I'll tell you right now. Oh, right now, they do not love me. But if your I was that, in your ear, your oh my god! <laughs> yeah, like after you want to take your order, little dick. People are like, oh, <laughs> whoa! Whoa! She's not like other girls. <laughs> she took my order. <laughs> Merch. I'm like, all right, we're selling T-shirts in the lobby. Thanks for coming. Oh my Dude, god! I want to see that gimmick right now. That's amazing. Go, see that? That's amazing. Just this saucy, smart alecky. <laughs> oh my god! Just diner waitress. Yeah. Oh, dude. People she do. Took my order. I do think like sometimes my tips would be better when I'd be like a shitty bitch of to course. certain tables. Oh, sure, yeah. Like businessman. If I was like this guy, oh, we're all getting old fashions except this guy. What is he a pussy? They're like, all right, well. Now I have to get one, even though I have to drive back to New Jersey after this. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love the manipulation of people. Of like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna take your energy and I'm gonna manipulate it. Like, I, know I had exactly a great. What you need if there's anyone listening money. who's a waitress, this is a great tip to get tips. What you do is if you like forget to greet a table, like they've been sitting there for a while, you haven't taken their order, mm -hmm. blah, blah blah. You go over to them and you go, "Sorry guys, it's just that table over there is." What am I doing? I shouldn't talk to you about this. Uh, how can I help you? And then they think you're not the problem. That table's the problem. And also now you're their favorite because you like oh, yeah. gossiped with them a little bit. That's the and you don't even move. have to say anything. You can just that's, be like, ah, oh, that's sorry, so I shouldn't have said that to you. Wow. You, it's like and then you, they'll you tip you so well because you're having a bad day. back a little bit. Yeah. A little inside baseball. Ooh, yeah. And they go, the inner they go, oh, she's having a bad day. We yeah. should give her 25%. I used to do she's oh, having a hard day. That's fantastic. I used to do the one where... <laughs> It's my table in my station, and I just haven't gotten to him yet. And I'm just like, has nobody gotten to you? I oh, I did that all I the time. You. I did oh, that all of the time. I'll handle you guys. You know Don't what? worry. About I'll take care. Don't of wait it. for anyone yeah. else. <laughs> oh God, this. That's yeah, the, it's manipulation. It's is a. It's like the, best. the stripper. Thank God you guys came in. You guys are the cutest guys in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly You're that. The hottest guy in yep. here. It's exactly. And ever that. since the burner number came a thing, like working yeah. girl, like. There's certain parts of the country that I've toured where the women in the strip club are openly offering their services oh, to the men. Sure. Openly. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. There's a vice, but apparently someone gets greased and no one bothers yeah. them, right? Yeah. And ever since the phone had an app where you can do a burner number, it's like women would, here's my number. Yeah. What? And they would tell their friends, I just got this dancer's number. Now people are onto it, but in the beginnings of that, I used to have friends that. come back Burner and like, number. oh my God, I got this girl's number and oh my, but it's her burner number. It's not a, her real yeah. phone. It's so like does, her stripper phone. So does it have, I'm, now I'm like, how can I scam with this? Wait, is it, or is this all outdated now? The burner phone? Because I want this app. Well, I'm it's just, a, it, oh, they have burner phone apps. Oh yeah? Yeah. 
You, and it'll give you a generated number that is your generated number. Yeah. And it comes to the app, like phone calls, text. You can also all do that. a Google number. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get a Google number. It goes to your email. You don't ever have to check it. Just give if it to people. If I was a girl, I would do like that. Schemes. But also, if you give I'm someone a, your Google number and you hook it up to your phone, your phone rings. Yeah. So, because guys will do this thing when you give them your number, where they'll try to test it. To see yeah. It's yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So right. if you give them the fake number, uh, the Google number, your phone rings. So uh-huh. you can go, oh yeah, I yeah. got gotcha. you. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. It's a thing of beauty. Ah, or just give them your real number and then block them immediately. It doesn't matter. That gets so tiresome. <laughs> if you're meeting 50 guys a night and. You want to yeah, get customers? That's true. Because then you like go. Oh, I need this oh, and that. Because you're, you're yeah, working. I mean, if you're a waitress, you're wor- you're wo- <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're maximizing your earning potential. This is like this is waitress level. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sticking with the emotional manipulation. I don't need to get the burner number. No, I mean, part of being a waitress bartender is like pretending you're gonna fuck a guy, oh. and that's the worst part. Oh, I bet. Do you feel gross? Yeah, but sometimes gr- it's like powerful. funny. Do you feel powerful or gross? Uh, usually gross, but sometimes it's like funny. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, can you believe that this guy <laughs> thinks he has a fucking shot with anyone who works here? This is insane, yeah. you know? Yeah. I love the dude who always thinks he has a shot. I From know. afar. Just I to know. watch that train wreck of a person. It's amazing. Inability it's like, to be I want to be that dumb. I want to be exactly Cause that dumb. Because he's, so he's, he's so, so happy. He's in his mind. He's so happy. Oh, yeah. Everything works out for him. He always is like, today's my day. You know? And every day I wake up and I'm like, oh, fuck, not today. (laughs) (laughs) I have to go to Queens and do a podcast. (laughs) Fuck, man. That's probably every day. (laughs) So good. Uh, I'm trying to think. I, I, as I was, as a waiter, I hooked up with a couple of, uh, you're a guy though did and you ever also, hook up with anyone you met no. at, yeah right not once I mean I worked at a comedy club so I hooked up with comics Plus it was all, now that I'm thinking about it too it was like all drug related like I have yeah drugs. it was yeah, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. fucked up the whole time yeah I have drugs do you want to hang out yeah, 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 yeah. we I you know if there was like a party at the comedy club I worked at I'd be like alright I'll hook a comic but <laughs> right. that was yeah. it <laughs> and I also didn't know better than to not do that. Yeah, I was like, yeah. maybe, maybe he'll give me a spot on his yeah, show at no. Broadway. No, and he won't. No, it's funny too because it's like high school. It's the most like high school. Yeah. Of any job I've ever had is is. It's crazy up. how much like high school it's it is. It's insane. like insane. These two people can't be in the same room because they fucked six years ago, <laughs> and it's still I'm weird. Such an adult. It's sometimes like you really, I really have to figure out my uh, thresholds for that. Yeah, it, I have such an adult life now that sometimes I get into conversations when I'm at clubs where I'm just like, oh, I forgot that like you dudes are like 30, 33 years old, and this is none of the stuff you're talking about matters yeah. in the scope of anything. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, but I, I love four it. Four times with my kid this morning. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. I don't want to hear about this shit. But the gossip is so good. Yeah, like comedy being like high school makes the gossip so yeah. real and good. <laughs> like other jobs are like. I feel like that guy was maybe trying to fuck that girl and comedy gossip is oh, like yeah. okay so they had sex that has nothing to do with the story then they both got high and then he had a spot at this place and you'll never believe who was there and it was like <laughs> this is also high stakes yeah, yeah. she got pregnant <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is you're right it is a lot of fun a lot more fun so what uh, what kind of jobs you got going on now are you, is I don't comedy, have a day job. Yeah, no? yeah, comedy. Yeah, fine, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Well, I have a lot of savings because when I I mentioned that shoveling shit job, I used to train horses, which paid very well. Oh, oh um, cool. So then I moved to New York and like never touched any of that money and worked in comedy clubs and restaurants and bars and stuff. And then after COVID, I was like, what if I just used that money to pay my rent and tried to be a full time comedian? Fantastic. And then that's yeah, that's kind of how it happened. So what's the uh, shoveling shit? So you are training horses? <laughs> yeah, I used to train. It's shoveling shit. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I'm like, how did you get? So I worked at I'm a like, barn. So this, this is a path I can do as well. Yeah, well, you gotta be really good at riding horses. Uh, so you do that I started shit where you rub the back of their fucking calves <laughs> and they lift their little paws. Yeah, the yeah, hoof. yeah. The hoof. Oh, really? That's awesome. That's yeah. like the whisper shit. Yeah, wow. I started riding horses when I was three years old. And then um, when I was in high school, I started training like retired racehorses to be show jumpers. You know, Whoa. like that thing that's like. Yeah. Um, Bruce Springsteen's daughter that's, does some shit. Yes. Like that. that's like a yeah, quest- Jessica Springsteen. That's like a, yeah. Equestrian. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, sport. 
So I was like flipping horses, basically. I was like buying horses for cheap that couldn't race anymore. But race horses retire when they're like five or seven. Mm. And show jumping horses retire when they're like 15, 16. That's so you can just you flip, you train them, you flip them, yeah. you sell them for more money. That is a lot of then, money to pay people to do that. That's like yeah. a really. Yo, I would watch a reality TV show on that. Yeah, 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 sure. yeah. Well, yeah. tell, horses, tell everyone I've pitched it to <laughs> that you would watch <laughs> that. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, can you even pitch it? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, just yeah, trying yeah, to get yeah. famous to sell tickets for comedy. It's not, it's <laughs> yeah. like we're not just trying to get money and fame. It's like, no, I, I really want to work this club out in uh, yeah. up Beaverton, next, Oregon. You, know, you may have seen her on Flipping Horses. Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and gentlemen, exactly. the stage means something the to me. The stage means something to me. <laughs> I've shoveled more shit. <laughs> That is how I feel. You know, like you meet somebody who's like, and God bless them, but like you meet somebody who's able to do comedy all the time because their parents are rich. Yep. And I think that's lot, fine as long as you're, used to if you're honest about it, yeah, right. more power to you. If you're lying about it, you can fucking you ride people feel piss. shitty about they... Yeah, I used to hate the people that didn't have to work and would make people shitty. Feel shitty about not grinding. Like I'm looking at, oh, yeah, I'm looking at your bookings. Yeah, oh, right. I'm I'm not grinding. Yeah, like, exactly. I'm, I'm looking at your bookings, dude. You don't you can't afford an apartment in New York City right. off those bookings. Right. So either you have a job or someone's helping you. Yeah. Which yeah, is right. fine either way. But like, don't totally. make other people feel shitty yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. Or like exactly. the new thing is people whose parents pay their rent will be like, I have a work from home job. And it's like, that's crazy because your roommate's a comedian and I talked to her. Uh, <laughs> she's never seen you open a laptop, but whatever you say, dude. And you're up at noon. Yeah. And you're, are you up at noon? Really? You're up at noon? Yeah. You're so grinding? And I'm up at noon, that. but I'm not lying about yeah. it. Yeah, you're not lying there. I was 10 minutes late for this podcast because it's early for me. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I would, if I had money like that, I would really, I would fucking, I couldn't stop talking about it. About money? Money. Yeah. I guess if you have money, it, it's it, that you hide but it, But right? I think people if that have money. you grew up money, without money. See, we're, we're guys that never had any money, yeah, right? Yeah. And to us, money would be this thing that would be so crazy. Yeah. But yeah. these people who have had money for generations, right. they know that once people know you have money, they ask you for shit. Uh, but also, also shit they're just like, yeah, yeah. they're just You're ashamed that, they're ashamed of the fact that somebody could say that they're uh, specifically in comedy that somebody could say that their path was easy yeah because right. there's such every comedian has such a fucking chip on their shoulder about I had to do this I mean like all of these jobs like I had to do this this and this to be able to live in New York to be able to do this and like nobody fucking I worked harder than anybody to get where I'm at blah blah, blah. and it's like then for someone to admit like I didn't really work that hard I just kind of got where I'm at which yeah. like yeah I got lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I feel that way. I'm like, yeah, I had to work lunches in a restaurant. That wasn't that hard. Right. You know, like yeah, yeah. there, I know people who have had to do so much worse shit and yeah. it's like, but everybody wants their fucking thing to be the hardest. Yeah. 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 Everyone, and everyone so, needs to, their plight to be yeah. seen. I yeah. I need to be seen about this plight. So if your parents are paying your rent, people are like, uh, I yeah. work well, for home. How's that going to affect my plight and posting about yeah. grinding? And yeah. And like nobody's gonna, everyone's gonna hate me or whatever. But it's like I I know people who have that situation and are honest about it. And I'm like, that's fine. Like, yeah. As long as you're not walking around acting like you're the same as everybody else, that's fucking fine. Well, who cares? Also, they're almost gonna be in the majority anyways. Yeah. Who in this? Who there's very few people in this era of comedy that can afford to actually do comedy full time. Right. You know, without having some kind of job. And live in New York. Exactly. Yeah. And live in the major cities where they can get the most opportunities. It's, it's going away. It's going to be really hard to yeah, do. Yeah, I borrowed money from my mom two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't honest. care. I don't care. Like, I, I'm moving. I had to pay first month, the first month security last month and a broker you found fee. an apartment is insane. And I was like, Mom, I'm going to need a little bit of scratch. <laughs> I can't spend all of my money on just getting this apartment. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know? Crazy. Well, I was talking about this, like, so I have, like, a little bit of money now. Like, I've never had money, and, like, I have a little bit of money. But it's not, it's for someone my, my age, it's not a lot right. of money. Yeah. Especially but, when like, you work when I freelance. Talk to, like, when I talk to, like, 25-year-old comics, they're right. like, dude, you got money. I'm like, yeah, I got, I don't, I don't have no. money. If I had this much money at 25. That'd be a different story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is, like, I'm approaching, like. You know, I, I could have a major surgery coming up. You never know. You're yeah. 50 years old. That's fucking wild. 
Plug where you're at, please. Oh, um, all the stuffs. I have two podcasts. One is called Respectfully. It's just a podcast where we talk shit about whatever we want. And the other one is called Close Calls. It's a comedy podcast about near death experiences. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Lizzie Cassidy, Lizzie with a Y at the end. And I run a show in Brooklyn every Wednesday and Saturday called Comedians You Should Know. Nice. Awesome. JoshAcardo.com at JoshAcardo. Tour dates going to be announced in a couple weeks. Yeah. We got, some, we got some, we got some cool dates coming up. coming up. So see if your city's on the list. Uh, Ed McGowan Comedy on Instagram, EdMcGowan.com. See my dates. Uh, email us at WorkingClassComedians at Gmail. Tell us if you've ever shoveled shit. Have you uh, been a waitress? <laughs> a really bad. not a bad job shoveling <laughs> shit. No. Dude, Pop in a podcast. Like yeah, 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 it's awesome. <laughs> 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 all right. We'll see you guys in next week. See you. you can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you gotta do is type in working class holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.